Okay, I had a, a request to go over one of these OMC recoil starters, and this one's got a cracked sheave here from just corrosion, looks like. So the first thing you do is take a half inch wrench, take off the nut on top, and you take out this bolt that holds it all together. And what I'm going to do is I've got another sheave here I'm going to put on this one. So all this stuff will have to go on that one. And we can see how they operate. Got a little C clap, a little E clip, whatever you want to call it, right here. Pop that off. And that'll let your clutch dog come off. This one I'm going to go ahead and replace the cord to. If I can even get it out. Watch it tight. Let's cut it out right there. Let me get a knife or something to cut it with anyway. This one's so corroded, I don't even know if I can get it apart, but I guess that makes it a good candidate. Let's try. A lot of salt in this, this puppy. Spring's probably destroying this thing too. Maybe not. Alright, so let's get the tension off that spring. So the corroded thing will work. There we go. Alright, let's go ahead and take see if we can get the clutch dog thing off. These two little wires just operate the clutch dog because of a flat in there. So that just comes off like that. in there with a long screwdriver. All right. There we go. So there's the spring in there. You see all the corrosion in this one. It's really bad, so I'm gonna, in fact, the spring's broke right there, so see that it's broke so I'll have to put a new spring in this one as well so I'll dig this out of there and uh, then we'll come back I'll show you how to put a new spring and all that in there but yeah this one's in real bad shape so it may take me a little bit to dig it out but there's the old spring not much life left of that Get rid of that. Well, I think I got another spring right up there, so I'll probably just keep videoing. And let me get a wire brush and clean that up. Okay, so I'm just going to clean this up with a wire brush. Get that out of the way. Lose our washer.
ahead and I'm going to blow it out with compressed air. We want to put a little grease in there. There's supposed to be a little, uh, they call it a friction disc, a little plastic, but this one didn't have one on it, and I don't readily have one, so I'm just going to put it together without it, just to show you how it goes. Alright, here's a spring for this. It's one I took out of another old outboard, so I'll just use that one. They make a special winding tool for these springs, and I have that tool, but I honestly hardly ever use it. I, I normally just use a pair of vice grips and a vice if I need to wind a spring. should wear eye protection when messing with these springs because they can get off and pop you in the eye. So let me get something. There. All right. So if the spring doesn't fit in there, in this case it's gonna, then you just Wind it tighter by holding it, wrapping it like that, pull, wrap some more until you get it to fit in there. And then what I find is just take a pair of vice grips, about three or four inches back, clamp it on there, and put the spring on. This one's going to fit. There we go. That's pretty much how I do it. Like I said, I have a winding tool for these. But I, I rarely use it. Okay, got that in there. Now you can see there's a pin right here on the back of this. I'm going to wipe this off a little bit, but that pin goes right in there. Alright. Then you see there's these slots. They line up with these two slots here. There's a slot there. I got grease on them, but you hopefully can see it. There's a slot here and a slot there. They made up with those. And then you got to line that pin up into that hole on the spring, and then you'll have have everything right on it. Let me wipe this thing off a little bit. It's, it's in better shape than the one I'm replacing, but not by a lot. Clean it up a little bit. 
a little grease on that too. Now, that's, this is the tricky part, is lining up everything. But you can kind of look down in there and see if you're getting close. have to bend this spring to get it closer to the uh, center. Not there yet. But you can see how far the pin is from the, the center hole here. That thickness right there. So I'm pretty close right there. You just gotta look down in there and kind of aim for it and hope you get it. I just got it there, and you'll be able to tell right away when you got it because it'll, it'll be springy like that. And I just took it out, but anyway, you saw that. Hopefully, just line it up. Hopefully, I'm doing this where you can see it. Line it up, put it in there, and you'll be able to tell if you got the springs in there. Okay. All right, and then you also got to line this up with those two slots. There's a channel lock, so I can move that with. that out of there. supposed to spin. Now I'm going to have to get this freed up so it actuates the little wire there and turns. Let me try it. Get that out of there. I'll be right back. Okay, what I did was I took a socket that fits kind of right there on that thing, on that center thing, and then I just tapped it out like that. Of course, it was a lot harder to bang out, but you get the, you get the idea. So now this moves. Then I cleaned this up on my wire wheel, and then I cleaned that out with just a, a pipe brush, a round pipe brush in there. Okay, and you just put that back in there, and I put a little grease on it. A little more actually. Put some grease on there. And then that sticks up through there. Now it'll spin. Okay, so now we line up everything again. See if we can get it. There, I think we got it. Okay. You can see there's some spring tension on that, so I know I got it. Okay. Alright, at this point. 
we got to make sure that this center part is there it went you see it fit on them two slots I showed you those two little there it goes right there you just spin it until boom, it sinks down on that now we're going to take our little wire set up those are just two wires that hook into the actual dog paw and then we've got this wire that fits into a slot right here now some of these pull starts then this rides on this little tab here like so that's how that goes on there when we pull the rope it'll It'll do it. See how it when you turn it, it kicks the dog out. Okay, so then we got to cut a new piece of rope and put in there real quick. Let me get some some good size rope for this starter. Should be about it. Do -do 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 -do. All right, I got about six foot of cord here, and you want to melt the ends there. Do the same thing to the other end. I'll put on a little glove so when I twist it, it'll burn my fingers. All right, and then just kind of twist it around, make it pointed. There you go. So I'm going to take this back off so I can wind the rope around there. There's a little hole that it goes through right there. So tie a figure eight or an overhand knot. I generally just do an overhand knot. There we go. Snug it up. Okay. Wrap the new rope on. There you go. And then we're gonna leave a little piece bent sticking out like that. And then put this on one more time. We got it that time. Let's try again. Smash that back down. Get my rope. All right, line everything up. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so there's our rope. Let's put our little e-clip back on the dog paw. There that is. Let's put our bolt back through, put a little grease on that. Got me an extension. Makes it a little easier. And you don't need to reef down on that. I forgot to put the washer in. Oh, take it back out. Put the washer in. Put a little butter on that too. There. All right. I'm getting there. Boom. Put our nut back on. These are like a little clinch nut. Keeps everything locked in place. Again, just snug. Make sure your dog paw is working there. See, it's coming out. Those little wires, they fit in that groove. This thing's locked in that slot, those two slots. So as this spins around, these wires force the dog out. And if you need to wind this more, you can always pull this up the rope all the way back in and actually wind it a few, a few more times if you need to. This one feels pretty good, actually. And some of these have two sets of wires and two dogs. Some only have one. But the principle is the same. Um, and I can show you. You can see better why this one would have had to be replaced. Can you see this crack right in there? See that? It's completely busted from just white corrosion. I don't know if you can see in there. Oh boy, this one's this one was a mess. <laughs> so even that's a little busted there. And it also had a, a busted spring. So this is essentially garbage here. Um, so we'll put that where it's supposed to go in the garbage. And then you got your little boot here. It goes, well let's clean that out. It's got a groove too. You can take a piece of wire and wire these on is what I generally do. I find that just old wire twisted on there seems to work best. pushes up on there and like I said you can secure that with a piece of wire wrapped around there. Alright, now we gotta get this out of there. I'll clean this up with my wire wheel real quick and we'll reuse that.
Okay. That's cleaned up. Pull it out enough rope. Push it up through. Hopefully it'll come right out. And you need to pull out enough. This just feeds through the back. Hopefully you're getting this. You can see this. And then just kind of eyeball it for around there and then push it in the little rope grooves. Might have to do this a couple times if you get the length too long or whatever. In this case, it fit perfect. Pull that back out, shove that back in. This handle's kind of garbage, but you can you get the idea. Like I said, a piece of wire around there. And now you got a repaired pull start that's usable. I'll put the piece of wire there and it's working the way it's supposed to. The little clutch paw comes out ready to grab the catch on the top of the flywheel. And so that's a good starter now. And that's all the little wires do. And like I said, some of them have two sets of wires and two dogs. Some only have a single. Um, but the principle is exactly the same. So I hope this helped. And uh, that's really all there is to these. And like I said, they're supposed to be a, a plastic, they call it a friction disc in there. I've seen some that have two. I've seen some that have one. I've seen many that have none, if they, especially if they've been taken apart before. It's not particularly critical. It will still work. Um, it will still work just fine without it. Um, the, the, the main thing is keep it good and greased. And, and don't let it get like that other one. So... And this one I'll clean up a little on my wire wheel and make it look even a little better. So hopefully that helps. That's how I do it.